map of what they must go through to continue the detention. So again, uh, the, like I said, the excuses. The detention starts at the point you're not free to go, not Correct. when they book you in. Correct. The... Yeah. I mean, in the, I'm not going through the quotes in the book, okay? okay? That's one question you must continually ask them. Am I free to go? Am I free to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? That's a simple yes, no answer. Well, if I'm free to go, okay, bye bye. And then if they come back with more crap, hang on, sorry, are you, you just said I'm free to go. Okay? As soon as you're not free to go, that's when the de time of detention starts. So we've got to keep asking, am I free to go, am I free to go, the whole way through. And strip uh, search, what they'll do is uh, they'll search you. Same thing applies. What do you expect to find? What led you to the belief you'll find that? Because to breach my peace, to search me, you need to show me the evidence. If you've got no evidence, you've got no excuse to search me. Bugger off. And we've actually got admissions from the police that, oh, it's routine. Well, routine ain't good enough. It's unlawful. You need to show the evidence. Okay? And so then when they uh, put you in the cell, uh, when you know that you're going to be put in the cell, basically you ask the custody officer under your rights, can you please give me the rights of detention booklet? Not leaflet, booklet. Okay? Because I'm going to be in here for a few hours and may as well educate myself a bit of my rights. How long do they detain you for, for charging? Up to 24 hours. Okay, we'll get on to that. So the booklet tells you your rights. Okay? So you may as well learn them if you're going to be there. Another reason they say is we need to uh, question you to, to eliminate you from our investigation. Thank you for yet again confirming an unlawful detention. Okay? And they'll say uh, you have the right to your phone call to your solicitor. No thanks, it's okay, cool, I don't want it, you can interview me now. If you say yes I want a solicitor, then they'll say yeah, no worries, we'll sort it out for you. You're in there for 18, 20, 23 hours. Okay? You've asked for a solicitor, they'll grant you your wish. Because you've asked. They're nice people. Okay? Okay. So, what you're doing is you're forcing them to interview now because I don't have to wait for a solicitor. Let's get the job over and done with and then we can all go home. Now, with the interview, Again, okay, you'll find a lot of what I'm teaching is totally opposite of what everybody else teaches, right? So, when you get into the interview, it's like, uh, you have the right to remain silent, blah, 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 maybe held against you. Why is that? Under the rules of equity, you have an opportunity to defend yourself. If you do not take that opportunity, okay, you, it's your problem, mate, not ours. We gave you the opportunity. And therefore the judge can direct the jury to infer what they want as to a late defence. Okay? You can decide if it's bullshit yourself. Do what you want with it. Okay? They, we gave them the opportunity. They chose to ignore it. So, and um, yeah, I've got the right. And yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm standing on my right of silence. Thanks for reminding me of that one. Can you give me a list of questions that you want me to answer? You've got my name and address, you can send them to me, and I'll get back to you in due course with my replies. What can I do? You're acting perfectly on me. You're removing yourself from a stressful position. You're really making them look like a bunch of idiots. And, and over 90% of people are charged with something different from what they were picked up for. Okay? So, they go fishing, they find something <coughs> to catch you on. What is that on a particular part of the manual? Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know. But it's in this, uh, uh, in, in the next part. Protecting yourself. Protecting yourself. Yeah. Okay, so do you see how, with just using a bit of common sense rationality and a bit of foundational knowledge, we really can change things. So basically, if we're witnessing somebody being arrested and we see they've given the name and address to the police and the police continue, then we can turn around to them and say, hey, hang on, you have no lawful right to do this. They've given you their name and address. 
you can now serve your claim to them. And the courts determine guilt and not you. So bugger off and leave the guy alone. Okay? And stand, start to stand up for one another. Stop turning a blind eye. That's how we create the change. So with the protests, in, I can't remember which month, in the morning we started off in Hyde Park and uh, went up to the police because people are scared to talk to police. So it was like getting the newbies. Don't talk to the police, ask them for their names and this stuff. So uh, with the interaction we had then, the, uh, uh, the question at the time was oath or affirmation. Uh, and so this one young copper said, no, but I've done an attestation. Boom, we've got some new knowledge. Therefore now it's oath, affirmation, and attest or attestation. They're all saying yes. So getting people just to ask police and things like that, they'll give you your name, most of these guys. They're very reasonable. And that. <laughs> Their boss will do the same, no problem. So you've got the normal guys, then you get the white hats, that's the hierarchy, you know, white hats in charge of, I don't know, eight normal guys. And then you have the red hat who's in charge of the group of white hats. And up to the red hats, at the red hats you start to get a different reaction. Now when you're asking somebody who's got people below them, the question changes. Can you confirm all officers under your command are acting under their oath, affirmation, or attestation. Okay? And by the time you get to the yellow hats, they say they're warranted and that's all you need to know. Okay? And they totally will not go down the road. Why? That leads me to the belief your intents are, are you know, not lawful yet. Okay? You've got, either you've got some infiltrators <coughs> or you've got something in there. Okay? And, and so that happened in the morning, and we've got it all videoed and everything. So we got to BBC, and then with the police vans, you just video the number plates, and they've got the unit numbers and papers, and you walk past, and they're all really slowly and deliberately, and next one, take your time. Again, with your two witnesses, so they can see it. So BBC, there was no incidents at all. We got to Regent's Park then, and there were three police vans, so it started the same thing again went past the first window and says, oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> because I tell them who I am. I'm not, I've got no fear. You know, I'm, we're all equal under the law. I've got nothing to hide. You know, I talk to police and tell them who I am. Uh, next guy says, oh, Mr. Horn, you're famous. We all heard of you. And the next one on the third band says, hi, Mark. And all of them said, you've already recorded us. Why are you recording us again? I recorded you at BBC. I need to know who's here now. Okay. So then the organisers uh, said, OK, party time's over, we're all going home. So the police changed their behaviour. They start off in their groups on the side, and then they start going in two by two and start stirring the ship. Okay. So as soon as they changed their behaviour, went up to the liaison officer, the guys in blue, and said, what are your new orders? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you guys are now going into the crowd. You've been given new orders. What are they? Oh, we've been told we must disperse the crowd. So... Do they have to tell you what their orders are? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and so I said, um, and does that include the use of force? And they he said, yeah. So I said, right, I wish to intervene under your policy that you need to explore all alternative avenues before you even consider using force. Can you tell your commanding officer, I want to speak with him? Uh, and it was like, no, 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 and all of this sort of stuff. Uh, eventually he said, okay, I'll go and speak to him. So a few minutes later, a guy, a white hat, comes along uh, in there and all of the police move back out. And I went and I said to him, you, uh, I spoke to them and they said you intend to use unlawful, uh, use force. I need to know the lawful reason you intend to use force. Uh, and he turned around on his radio and then they all came out. Then Roy and Helen uh, were talking to the Red Hat who came after a little while because, you know, the first attempt didn't work. Okay? 
go back to the, keep in mind the three notices principle. Okay? So this was our, their notice that they intended to use force. So the second notice, Roy, was music was too loud? Yeah, you did. Okay. And so Roy Park Russian asked, can you just show us the metering device which led you to that conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> which obviously they didn't have. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the first claim was under the coronavirus legislation, we're going to disperse you. Second was, you guys are making too much noise. We're going to disperse you and we have the right to use force. Along comes Yellow Hat. And the yellow hat then started off. And <coughs> it was, uh, th th this is an unlicensed uh, event. So, is, is that a civil matter or a criminal matter? Uh, civil. Well, who's like the complaint? Oh, the council. Well, in that case, fine, we'll just carry on. Get the guy from the council down here and we'll talk to him. So, what we had was, we had three <coughs> events there. The first one was the intent to use force. The second one was a bullshit attempt, i.e. our witness one. And the third one was witness two. And guess what the police did? Gathered their things together and left. <laughs> <laughs> so this stuff works. It's not just off-the-cuff stuff. Okay. So. Uh, oh, who's the TSG in terms of like the colour hats or are they separate? Uh, uh, territorial uh, territorial uh, department. What about they? Yeah. They're, 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 they're just uh, the, the bully boys for the police. Tactical mm. support. Tactical mm. support. Mm. support. Yeah. They're just the bully boys for the police. Yeah. Um, okay. The the hats are all the same, colours all the same, all the same. Yeah, yeah, because they got maybe it's red bands or something. But, but what you'll see, and yeah, basically when we were walking between, you know, you've got them parked behind and they've got their doors open on a sunny day, and you just go up to them with a video recorder and my God, it's like, oh. <laughs> and, and then you ask for the boss, and it's like, you know, bugger off, and all sorts of stuff like this. When they behave like that, you know that there's an awful intent. Mm -hmm. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to see it. Okay, so I just, that there was just to give you an idea of simple things that we can do uh, to actually build up the courage to test and your beliefs. Okay, where you're at relatively low risk, but you can escalate it to make it very high risk, okay? Extremely high risk. Uh, but so far, like I say, I think I've tr trodden that line quite well. I've not been arrested yet. Okay, so in the manual, basically, it goes through numerous scenarios with extensive wording. Okay, and in essence what you do, what's your name, and the first time you'll just simply ask what's your name. If they don't give you the name, then you're increasing, you're stepping the game up a bit. By refusing to give me your name, you are leading me to the belief your intents are unlawful. Again, I ask you what is your name. Uh, and then the, the, if they still refuse, you step it up. So, I've asked you three times for your name. You've confirmed my belief of your intent being unlawful. And should you continue this interaction, I'm going to sue you for harassment. Okay? So I, we try and turn this around and put the pressure then back on them. The more of us that start doing it, the sooner they'll start changing their behavior. But Fundamentally, what is the problem? Everybody's young. When we're young, we start off, oh, look at all this crap, and the police are corrupt, the courts are corrupt, and everybody's corrupt, and I'm going to go and study law, and I'm going to sort out the legal system. You get your first job, all of a sudden you've got money, you've been a student for years, you've had no money, and so you start spending it and filling out, and then you're higher purchasing stuff, and now you're in debt. And then you think after two or three years, shit, I can't change anything yet. Okay? But by then you've trapped yourself. Mm. It's not the system that's trapped you. You've done it yourself. It's not them organizing or planning anything. You've chosen to put yourself in there. You've chosen to buy the bigger TV or take out the car or on HP or buy a house. That's your choice. So we've got to stop this nonsense of blaming them. Honestly, they are not clever. They can't organize a piss up in a brewery. Okay? 
But by us saying, oh, they organized and it's planned, my God, you're giving them way too much credit. They have no way that sort of knowledge. And what you're doing, which is even worse, you're disempowering yourself and you are granting them power over you. Okay? That's how children behave. Children blame everybody else. It's time <coughs> humanity grows up and says, hey, hang on. Yeah, I'm part of the problem. Okay? It starts with me. I must accept responsibility for my part of this problem. Okay? I've got to stop blaming them. And if you look at governance, wherever you look, okay, the reason it's crisis management and nothing is proactive is, you will get zero votes if you say, I avoided a recession. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> I don't believe you. Okay? The only way you get voted is by saying, oh, there was a recession and look what I did. They are crisis managers. The system is designed like that. It's not 300 people somewhere sitting together. I've got, worked with big companies, small companies. Okay, I've been in meetings with 20 people and 5 people. You won't get 10 people to agree anything. How the hell do you think 300 people are going to agree to run the world? Forget it, it ain't going to happen. Everybody, and Adam Smith got this right, it's self-interest. Yeah. The invisible hand. I'm sorry, do you believe there's no cabal then? Is that what you're saying? There's, there's there, no there, cabal. There's, there's who's groups. organizing lockstep, there's organizing no, 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 all no, these no, other clans. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm saying there's not 300 ruling the world. There are groups of self interest. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if many of you are aware what happened in August 2019. Like I say, I used to do stock market analysis. Didn't they move over 200 uh, CEOs of. Uh, World companies that they all I look at down. really simple stuff. Me, me simple. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <laughs> Basically, there's a graph okay, called the overnight interest rate. This is a very interesting little graph. <laughs> the overnight interbank interest rates. So this is percent. This is time. 18th of August. Eighteenth to twentieth of August. Mm -hmm. So what in those three days? Financial collapse. Naughty little children. The bankers uh, in 1895, when there was a financial collapse in America, and 1929, what did the people do? Those buggers ran away with our, mo our money. They went and took them and pulled them out of the banks and put them on street lamps and trees and hung them. Mm. Okay? Then there was three generations in between to the 2007 collapse. So they managed to keep it together, stealing from the people. And in 2007, they managed to get the people to bail them out. However, 2007 to 2019, not even one generation in between, they would never have been allowed to get away with another financial collapse. So the Fed, between August and December pumped in more money to, under, uh, to hold up the financial system than in the whole lot from 2007 up until that point. Okay? So what happens is, we the naughty kids, not remembers the naughty thing we did in 2007, we're going to get a serious hiding now if we hold our hands up and say we've really messed up again. How are we going to dig ourselves out of this one? <sighs> <laughs> hey, Bill Gates, we know he's into virus. Hey, Bill. <laughs> okay. And so this is what happens. One person, instead of standing up and holding their hands up and saying, I messed up, all of a sudden you get everybody ass covering and looking for self-interest. So who made money out of this? Bill Gates. Most people don't realize he's actually not a philanthropist. Yeah. He's no, a very no, wise no, investor. No, 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 no. Okay, his trust funds bring in more money than he can philanthropize yeah. out on the other hand. Yeah. Okay? Uh, you've got all of these different parties with self-interest 
that then the bankers don't get blamed. That's, uh, we bankrupt because of COVID, man. Come on, let's get real. Mm -hmm. but nothing to do with us. So they're giving out loans like smarties the year after. I can. Yeah. You know, COVID is Russia. <laughs> okay, but the point I'm trying to make, I do not believe you can get 10 people to agree a strategy. You can get people together for a while and you can see what's happening. They are starting to play the blame game now already and start to blame everybody else. Pfizer is potentially under $33 trillion lawsuit. Okay. That kills the pharmaceutical industry. And off. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember, I've got it at home on the computer. Uh, Moderna is bringing out a lawsuit against Pfizer. They all are now to fight one another. Fight for blame game, alright? Okay? Because they know they will not get away with this. You know, so I don't believe there's 300. I believe there's lots of groups of yeah. interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, even within the Rothschild family, I can assure you they're not all for this agenda. Yeah. And I'm sure within there, just like in any family, you've got opposing views. Uh, and they all, everybody's just trying to find it out, see where they can make the most out of it, yeah. because it's human nature to do as little as possible for as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, but it's self-interest, and I think Adam Smith got that right in 1751. Yeah, yeah that's what keeps me going, because I'm thinking they're psychopathic narcissists, narcissists that want to be at the top. So all the way along, the war is going to fight each other. They might get along for a little bit till they get what they want, and then they're going to fight each okay. other. Now, you mentioned this word narcissist and psychopath. Okay. Again, very disempowering words. Words are powerful, okay? When you... I use the word bully. Yes, there will be the odd, you know, loopy, whatever. Okay? A bully, we know how to deal with. But a psychopath disempowers us. Okay? By saying, oh, we don't know what to do with this. It's somebody else. Okay? So, I, I look at it, yes, there may be, because to have good, you must have bad. So, for a psychopath, you must have somebody equal and opposite on the other side. Everything in nature has equals and opposites for material existence. Without equals and opposites, the sum is not zero, and you can't make something out of nothing, you know. The sum always must be zero of the energy. This is the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, and so, uh, self-interest is definitely what it is. What's happening with the police with Joseph? One cop messed up. Joseph said, get your camera out of my face in uh, Hyde Park. How dare you talk to a policeman like that? <laughs> so the cameraman was following him around for like two hours and just couldn't get anything on Joseph. Uh, until they came up with some concoction bullshit <coughs> thing. Uh, that he he called somebody a uh, brown shirt. I didn't know what a brown shirt okay. is, and I'm German, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but basically, apparently, that's really insulting or something like that because you follow orders and you're Nazi or something like that. <laughs> but by the end of the day, when we got that police, uh, the uh, custody record, I started comparing it against the uh, video. And it's like, all these numbers are different. What's that about? That's how we found out about the warrant number being different to the back. <laughs> that. Okay? Uh, and in the custody records, you'll get so much self-incriminating information because they are that stupid. They think they can do whatever they want. Yeah. And they'll write that down in their witness statements, which they'll give you with the custody record. So, again, it's about them hanging themselves, and they always hang themselves because they think they are so great and clever and that. It really is unbelievable. Okay, so then, so that there really is the uh, second part of the course, but like I say, you can go into this depending on where you're comfortable, and the same thing obviously applies to, um, to the... Uh, courts, which we'll talk more okay. about tomorrow. I have a question. Yeah? What's your name and address? Are we actually obliged to give them name and address? You're not obliged to 
uh, provide them with any, uh, anything to assist the investigation. However, what you're doing by giving your name and address is, with the evidence they present you at the time, if you believe that will sway a jury, or you don't want to waste your time playing with them, just give them your name and address, because that stops the interaction. Once you can, and if, you know, keep something to verify your name and address, there is no way they can lay a finger on you. So when you go to a protest, so what? Give them your name and address. What's the problem? Yeah. Is what about they join them and gives them gives them a right to no. take the next step? They the, 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 the next step is, okay, they can send their claim into the court, and we'll sort this out in the courts. Are the you courts making join them? Isn't making join them by providing names? No. To what? To nothing. That's what they've been taught of, isn't it? It's like no, no, that's, it's what, that's it's what, what you believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Think yeah. about it, okay? Yeah. They get your name and address, okay? Why do they let you out the cell then once they've got your name and address after 24 hours? They can only keep you for 24 hours. To try and find something. No, but you said they got joined it, therefore contract and therefore, in theory, from what you're saying, rationally, they can keep you in there. The police do not determine guilt. That's for the courts to determine if there's joinder and if there is harm caused. What if they do? It's got nothing to do with joinder. Are they able to extract money from the trust account by any chance once you give them money? <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm going down. Right. Sorry, I don't mean to be so dismissive. Okay. Right. Let's just quickly talk about this trust account. Okay. Uh, are you, you've got yeah, just something on, you on, on, on that one, what you're talking about with the uh, evidence and such. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, Liam will be able to tell you a lot more about this than I can about arrests and all of that. Okay, he's got a bit of experience. <laughs> 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 a little bit of experience. He looks the On the given, given evidence, um, it states in the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, you don't have to give any evidence that may incriminate yourself, Correct. including fingerprints and DNA. Yeah, so you don't have to give me a name and address if you don't want. You don't have to. But if they just take it, but they do take it. They do take your fingerprints. Let them let them know first. No worries. No, I've I've let them know, and I've and I've been and I've been held down by six policemen while they took my while they took my fingerprints. That's all good. They do what they want. They let them know. They still take it. You can't. They do. Because you've already given them the knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, so if you've told him, under the police and criminal evidence act, if you come and take my fingerprints and DNA, you'll be breaking the law. And as I always say to him, but oh, please feel free. You can. I don't mind. I'm not going to fight you. Yeah? If you come and force me under protest and you're Let's take a guess where this is going then. Because you've acted unlawful, that's inadmissible evidence into the case. Into the uh -huh. Yeah? Because any unlawfully gathered evidence, they actually can't <coughs> So if they're trying to get DNA confirmation after the fact, that actually is inadmissible evidence. Can you get like the DNA to I don't know if that's what you were going to, but carry on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's 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 theoretically, but practically, no? I've got the people's lawyer card here, and I was just reading it through, and he said on this, that basically, um, if arrested, no obligation to cooperate or give name address, um, any cooperation should be made under duress and reserving all available rights. Mm -hmm. And number three is no right to take fingerprints unless the offence is imprisonable. So do we uh, yeah, no, but even, even again, go back to the simplicity of breach of peace. That they should show you, here we've picked up a fingerprint. We want to verify if your fingerprint is the same. If they don't say, here's a fingerprint that we've got and we want to check yours against it, they can't just take your fingerprints and then go and search for the evidence but, afterwards. But you know, when I, I appeared in court once um, as a the CPS main witness, and of course when you go through, straight away they get all fingerprints here, so of course... Uh, that's their system, that's their yeah. belief, and we've got to stop so that. So they have my, mm -hmm. they have my yeah, fingerprint, yeah. 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 No, this is what we've got to stop. 
Well, they, they want to collect everybody's DNA. That's yeah. where, that's where From the police's viewpoint, it's simple because yeah, it seems I mean, like DNA is pretty... But the whole system is going towards genetic modification, collection of each individual again, genome, right? That's where it's going. Uh, so again, want, yeah, epigenetics blows that out the window, yeah. really. I mean, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't really matter. Can I just say, I mean, this is massive yeah. because even our kids in, in secondary yeah. school yeah. now, yeah. to get their yeah. lunch, yeah. they have to yeah. give their yeah. lunch. Yeah, yeah, sure. But they're acting unlawful practices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing unlawful practices. 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 They're doing unlawful I've got nothing to hide. I take you on one to one. I don't care if you dress up in fancy dress or not. It makes no difference to so me. So you would give your date of birth? Yeah. If the cop is well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they don't need that to serve you notice at your address, which no, is you're, you're they removing don't. that excuse to arrest you. Correct, they don't. Yeah. But all I want to do is say, what, you think I'm scared of you? Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you think I'm not giving you my name and address yeah. because you think that you're some, you know, big dude or something? Yeah, well, I'm yeah that's my name and address. Under the mister? Every time they back down. Mm. It's important Every to remember time. as well, we've been policed by consent in this country. Yeah. 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 Which is what we're moving on to now. <laughs> okay, so this is sort of around about page 65 and 66. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to leave that with that, but basically, if you want to play with it, all right, just read through because you'll see you can escalate this stuff to any level you like. But by having witnesses, okay, you automatically are not going to go and complain to the IPCC like I wrote in the manual, that needs updating. We're going to get the evidence and just go straight for a PCP, private criminal prosecution against these unlawful actors. Do we need the private uh, address to be able to do that? Okay, for, for their name and address, we just need a means of identifying them which we can get through uh, the time, the date, uh, and if we've got video, collar number, anything like that. Uh, you don't need to, I mean, I know uh, Dolores, she was a bit stupid with what she did with her. Yeah. With, with, with the elections when she basically threatened to arrest them and all of this stuff. She had enough evidence for the substance to serve them with her claim. It doesn't need an arrest. In the same way, once the police have got my information, that's it. That it doesn't need to go any further. Mm -hmm. But, sorry, in terms of evidence, you, you're also, also saying when you take a uh, photo or video, yes, or whatever's happening, you also mentioned there has to be another two people. Yeah. Filming you. Yeah. So okay. One, one, the, 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 the reason, the reason for it is okay. Basically, from two independent witnesses. Okay. Now, fine. There's three witnesses of what's going on. However, if something happens to me, I want two witnesses yeah. 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 for me. Yeah. Okay. And those two witnesses need to be out of risk. So they can stand back a meter or two, and I can. So the only threat is the police in that case, right? Hmm? The only threat for me would be the police. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, and okay, so let's just talk about this oath affirmation and attestation of police, which is what we're going on to now. Basically, what you do is, uh, when, you, when you're interacting with them, okay, what you do is, you ask the arsehole, <laughs> are, you under, are you acting under your oath affirmation or attestation, yes or no? They don't answer you. I don't need to tell you. I'm warrant number so and so. I'm not interested in your warrant number. The contract with me is you will keep the peace, protect people and property according to law. Are you acting under your oath, affirmation, or attestation? Yes or no? I'll ask you twice. I'll ask you once more. Are you acting under?